So let me just quickly, you know, uh, take us through some of the things that was discussed last week. Very interesting story that many of us may not really know, but I tell you, this is one of the core, you know, foundation of Christian faith. Everybody needs to know it because that is the will of God. That is the purpose of God. That is where everything started. The covenant of God with his people. Hallelujah. The covenant of God with his people. And uh, <clears throat> we started by reading from the book of Galatians chapter 3, verses 15 through 18. And the Bible says that, brothers and sisters, let me uh, take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human uh, covenant that has been duly, duly established. So it is in this case, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say and um, to, uh, to seed, meaning many people, but and to your seed meaning one person who is in Christ. One person who is in Christ. So from verse 17, it says, what I mean is this. The law introduced 438 uh, 30 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the purpose. Verse 18, for if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God, in His grace, gave it to Abraham through a promise. Hallelujah! Gave it to Abraham through a promise. So I said that covenant is a solemn agreement, it is a credible promise, an arrangement between two or more parties. That is what covenant is. Hallelujah. Then I went on to say that it involves, you know, mutual obligation, a commitment to responsibilities and action. It is faithfulness in its purest form with abiding friendship. Hallelujah. That is very important. That is the main, that is what it entails to be in a covenant. Hallelujah. Either with people, with states, with whoever. It is, you know, a committed uh, a commitment to responsibilities and action, and it is mutual. It is faithfulness in its purest form, with abiding friendship and uh, um, abiding friendship. So I said there are different kinds of covenant. The first that I spoke about was marriage between two people. Hallelujah! And many of us are very familiar with uh, with this, and we know how serious it could be. Marriage is a covenant, just like we had it yesterday. Hallelujah. It's a covenant. It's a total commitment. It's a responsibility. Amen. And I was so thrilled yesterday listening to, you know, uh, uh, the vow or the pledges as they read it, you know, to one another that I will love you. I will do this. I will care for you. I will take, you know, you know, kind of, it's, it's beautiful. Amen. And it doesn't just end there with the words. It has to go with actions in everything. When it is convenient, when it is not convenient, it has to, it must be, because it's a covenant. Hallelujah. Then it goes further that there are different kinds of covenants, marriage between two people. Uh, okay, I said that. And now serious it is. Then I give examples of some covenants. One of it is national agreement. For instance, United States, you know, comprises of many states, Maryland, Delaware, small as it is, or uh, California, big as it is, Texas, you know, they are all coming together in a kind of covenant, a kind of agreement, hallelujah. And the same thing goes for uh, uh, international treaties, as you can see in there, international treaties between, you know, uh, nation states, independent states, just like we have between NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and the Worship Pact to protect themselves. It's an agreement. The NATO says that if anything, if you are a member of NATO 
and anybody outside NATO to have anything to do with you or harm you or wage war against you, then it is assumed that that person is waging war against the entire member of NATO. So it is one for all, all for one. Did you get what I'm saying? So that's an agreement. It's the covenant. And there is bound by actions and responsibilities. Praise the Lord. Then I said that, you know, but considering all these covenants, you know, there is one that is greater. It is divine human covenant. Divine human covenant. That is the covenant, you know, a relationship between God and man. A relationship between God and man. That's divine. Amen. Then I went on to say that it is God who always initiates covenants with man. When you think of this, I mean, of it, God will always come down, I mean, come to man and make a deal. Hallelujah. It's God that actually, you know, most of the times initiates covenant with man. Praise the Lord. It's only when we are in need of something that says, God, I vow if you do this for me, I'm going to know. But God himself already had, you know, a covenant that even covers those things that we are asking for. Praise the Lord. So he knows he is God and all and, uh, <clears throat> and higher than lonely man. But he is ready to come down and agree with man because he loved and loves us so much. Hallelujah. He loved and loves us so much. So the creator of the universe is willing to enter into a daily working agreement with his creation. It's amazing and significant that God will come down, you know, to make agreement with, you know, can you imagine if I make this chair and I make some, you know, a, a, a covenant with the chair? Huh? It's, it's not possible. This is, this is something that I created. I can do whatever I want to do with that chair. Hallelujah. So the chair doesn't have anything, you know, over me. Praise the Lord. So that is how, you know, God came down so low huh, to enter into covenant with man. And I said, that this is how it started. With Noah, in the book of Genesis, God made a covenant and symbolizes it with a rainbow. Amen. God made a covenant with Noah and symbolizes it with a rainbow. Then in Genesis chapter 6, uh, chapter 6 and verse 18, but, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the earth, you and your sons and your wife, and your sons' uh, wives with you. That was the first stage of covenant that God made with man. Praise the Lord. And furthermore, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 through 21, then Noah built an ark, uh, built an altar. That was after the ark landed on the, on the ground, after, you know, he's been over there for 150 days. Amen. For, uh, uh, because of the, of, of the flood that destroyed the entire generation in those, I mean, the civilization and generation of, of that age. So then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of the clean animals and birds, he sacrificed one of, uh, a burnt offering on it. The Lord smells, uh, the Lord smells of pleasant aroma and said in his heart, Never again I will cause the ground because of human, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil, is evil from childhood, and never again, never again will I destroy a living creature as I have done. Hallelujah. I think that is the first time I'm reading in the scripture that God has to repent of what he did. Hallelujah. Are you seeing that? And it's for our good anyway. It's for our good that we shall not be destroyed any longer. Praise the Lord. Ah, okay, so in Genesis chapter 19, from verse uh, 13 through uh, 15, it says, I have set my rainbow in the cloud, and it will be the signs of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring cloud over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the cloud, I will remember my covenant because me, I mean, between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again, you can see how many times, never again it's been said. Never again, I will, 
never again will the water becomes a flood, you know, to destroy all lives. Hallelujah. So that is the covenant that God made with Noah. Now to Abraham. Are you following me? Now to Abraham in chapter uh, 12, verses 1 through 3 uh, of Genesis. God says, the Lord, the Lord has said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make you uh, your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and those, and whoever causes you, I will cause. You know, all and all people on earth will be blessed through you. Take note of that. It's very significant. Hallelujah. It's very, very significant. And that is why we are being blessed today. That is why we can call ourselves Christian. That is why, you know, God sent uh, uh, Jesus Christ. We will get to there and connect it with this very word. Praise the Lord. The other time I was, you know, leading the prayer on a, a, a worldwide something, I said, let's pray for, you know, the peace of Israel, of Jerusalem, because that is what God, you know, wanted us to do. Hallelujah. He said, those that love him are shall prosper. Praise the Lord. So you can see the connection. Your prosperity, your blessing is connected to the covenant that God made with Abraham. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me this morning? Praise the Lord. All right. So I said, the Bible says that when, you know, God could not find anything greater than himself with which to uh, uh, guarantee he swore uh, by his own name, which is impossible for him to, uh, for him to lie about. That he swore with his own name. Amen? Then, uh, in Genesis chapter 13, verse uh, 14 through 16, then the Bible says, the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord had parted from him, look around from where you are, to the north and to the and south, to the east and west. All the lands that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever, forever. Hallelujah. I will make, uh, did anybody, you know, create any land? It's God that created land. And the firmament, and you remember all those stories. Hallelujah. It's God of heaven. That is speaking here, giving the land that he has he created to the people of his choice. Amen. Are you hearing me? He says, I will make uh, I will make your offsprings like the dust on earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring will be counted. Hallelujah. He said he's giving them the land forever. That is God's covenant. A continuation uh, of what, you know, uh, 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 he determined to do with Noah. Hallelujah. So now, it goes further. He says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, in uh, Abraham, in a vision. Then he, he says, do not be afraid, Abraham. That's when he asked him to leave his father's land uh, and just go to nowhere, you know. Just go out, just begin to go. I will show you, you know, where you are going when you get there. Hallelujah. You know, so, and he said that I am your shield, your very great reward. Don't be afraid. Just get going. And God wants his words to be sufficient for us. When he says it, just do it. You don't need to know how it's going to happen. You remember the, 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 uh, 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 the wedding at Canaan. When Jesus turned water into, into wine, and the people met the, the, the mother and said, okay, you know, we are short of drinks, and uh, we have a lot of visitors that are coming, so what shall we do? Then the mother said, just go to him. Whatever he tells you, just do it. Whatever he tells you, just do it. So the mother knew. So he wanted his words to be sufficient for us in all things. So on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Amen. And said to your descendants, 
I, I, I give this land. Huh? Now, you remember, he said, I will give you. Now, he said, I give. So it's no more a proposal. Hello? It's no more a proposal. It's something that is already given out. He said, I give to your descendant. I give this land from the wadi uh, of Egypt uh, to the greater river that is the Euphrates, you know, uh, 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 the, the Euphrates, that is in uh, Sinai Peninsula. Hallelujah. Sinai Peninsula. Amen. So that's God speaking to Abraham at that time that the land is already been given to his family. Hallelujah. Then the story continues. By Sarai uh, uh, arrangements, Abraham impregnated Hagar. And then conflict you know, started between Sarah and Hagar. Hallelujah. It was Hagar that, I mean, Sarah that suggested that, okay, since we can't have a child, why don't you just go in with my maid and possibly we have a child that we can call our own. And as soon as the woman got impregnated, then the conflict started between, you know, Sarah and Hagar. And so God has to send Hagar out of the household. Hallelujah, because it's outside the purpose and plan of God. Now, let's go further. In Genesis chapter 16, 11 through 12, the angels of the Lord are also, are also said to, to her, that her there means Agar, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ismael, for the Lord has heard of your mystery. It will be that Ishmael will be a wild donkey of a man. You know what donkeys are? Hallelujah. Donkeys are very wild. They are to carry loads. Hallelujah. They are to carry loads. They are very strong. Amen. You can research donkey and see their characteristics. Very stubborn, very stubborn kind of animal. Praise the Lord. And, you know, he says, there will be, uh, I mean, Ismail will be a white donkey of a man. He, his hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. Uh, and he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. Hallelujah. I don't think that we can forget, you know, 9-11. Amen. You remember how those Arab Muslim people came and destroyed the whole, you know, uh, 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 lives in New York. You see what I'm saying? The Osama bin Laden and the rest of the story. We all know all these things. That this guy will be a donkey of a man, and those are descendants of Ismail. Hallelujah. Those are the descendants of Ismail. And the story continues even till now. Praise the Lord. Now, it goes further <clears throat> that, and with David, God is, um, <clears throat> sorry, and with David, uh, God established an everlasting covenant. Uh, the word everlasting means for all time. For all time, something that cannot stop, it doesn't have an end. Hallelujah. Then, what if man failed? That's the question. What if man failed? Why was God so confident to go into such a covenant, you know, with man? Now, the Bible says in Genesis that uh, every inclination of human heart is evil from childhood. So God knew that there is possibility that man will fail, yet he went into covenant with us. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? We're talking about covenant. Praise the Lord. We're talking about, that is to tell you that you are secured as you're sitting down there. You are covered. You are covered. No matter what the devil may try to do, it's a covenant that is already established on you. Hallelujah. And Christ paid the, 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 the price. That is where we are ending this, this uh, uh, message. So let me go on. In spite of all the failure, uh, 
the failures of on the part of Abraham huh? and David. You remember how David Abraham failed? Huh? There was a time that he wanted to enter Egypt. And you know, Sarah was so beautiful, right? And he just said, you know what? I will just tell them that I'm your brother. Because he, he was afraid that if he didn't say that, uh, they would take Sarah. And of course, the king of Egypt would probably take Sarah and of course, kill, kill him. So he lied. Hallelujah. And again, when it was girl, God continued to tell Abraham that, look, I'm giving you a child. Don't be afraid. It doesn't matter. Look at the sun. Look at the stars. That will be, you know, an example for you. Huh? They still went on huh, to make their own plan and allow a guy to come into the story. So he failed. Look at David. He also failed. You remember what he did? When he took the wife of somebody else and ordered that that person be killed? Hallelujah. He took somebody else's wife. So he failed. Yet, the, the covenant continues. Praise the Lord. So, David also can still boast. He can still boast on the covenant that God made with him. You see what he said? In 2 Samuel chapter, uh, uh, chapter 23 and verse 5, he says that, is it, not my, is it not my family God has chosen? Yes. He has made an everlasting covenant with me. His agreement is arranged and guaranteed in every detail. Amen. Did you see him posting that? Because he knew that, you know, his life is secure. Amen. No matter what the devil may do, uh, he's going to fail. Because the, the covenant with, you have with God can never be changed or altered. Praise the Lord. I tell you that's enough to wake you up Sunday morning huh? and come to the church to praise and worship him. You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So let's continue. <clears throat> so he said, we must not allow, I mean, so I said, we must not allow sentiment to make us line up with the enemy of God or oppose huh? his will and purpose. Amen. We must not. Because there was that sentiment. That was, you can imagine how many Palestinians have been killed. 240, just this recent, you know, conflict they had a couple of weeks ago. 240 Palestinians were killed. Only 13 in Israel were killed. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? Somebody can have a look at all the damage. Look at the, all the collateral. I mean, you know, the, 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 the structures that were being demolished. I tell you, we can't change the covenant of God, which is people. No matter what. Praise the Lord. Because it's God. It's God. So, in today's world, uh, world uh, population, the Jews are less than 1%, uh, and they are the most targeted people for abuse and total elimination, yet they continue to survive and thrive. Does that make sense? I tell you, this recent thing that happened, huh, there are a lot of reports of the Jewish people being attacked here in the United States. New York, for example, if you go to Montgomery County, what is that area there? Huh? Bethesda. No, that is the, the richest part of Montgomery County. Hallelujah. And it's the domain of the Jews. Praise the Lord. You can imagine what Hitler was thinking when he had to kiss, kill six million of them. Hallelujah. You remember the story with, uh, 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 what is that name again? That lady that became the queen. Is anybody Bible student here? Hallelujah. Oh, um, Esther. Esther, thank you. 
Octopus, plein pouvoir. Chicole. Plein pouvoir. Alléluia. Amen. Esther. So there has always been, you know, that inclination towards the destruction of the Jews. Why? Why are they not looking for, for the Yoruba people? Why are they not, you know, interested in the Ghanaians? Why are they not interested? You see what I'm saying? What makes them to be special? Praise the Lord. No, you need to agree that God has a purpose in the life of these people. And that is what is transferred to you. It's unfailing love. Unfailing love of God. Praise the Lord. So where are the ancient famous empires and civilization? Where are they? Amen? All the ancient you know, civilization, the empires, the Asian Persia Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, the Greek, the Roman, hallelujah. Not long ago, the Ottoman Empire and the British Empire, where are they? They have come and gone. Hallelujah. One may not even see their remnant in the world of today. Praise the Lord. But the Jews remain. Hallelujah. Their traditions remain. Their culture remain. Their language remain. Are you hearing me, people? Hallelujah. So in reality, the factors responsible for making of, uh, of a nation or homeland a population, number one, culture, number two, language, national boundary, and army. United States is United States today because we have all these things. The population, the culture, the language, the national boundary, and the army. Amen? Amen. Take note of that. So, now, if Socrates, uh, the, great, the great Greek philosopher, should come from heaven today and land in Athens. Athens is the capital of Greece. Hallelujah. He will not find a remnant of what is left, I mean, what he left, you know, as a Greek culture. Amen. The Greek language has been modified. It's not what it used to be. Hallelujah. And everything about, you know, the culture of people has revolutionized, has changed. Praise the Lord. Not only that, likewise, if Emperor Julius Caesar of Rome should land in Rome today, he will wonder what a relic the Colosseum uh, and the ancient Latin language have become. How many people speak in Latin again? Hallelujah. Some people studying it in, in, uh, in those days, in college, especially those in, in theological uh, 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 studies. I don't think people are doing that again. It's a waste of time. Who are you speaking Latin to? Praise the Lord. So you hardly see all those things they have come, they have disappeared. We are asked. I mean, uh, uh, Julius, we ask, where are the gladiators? You remember the gladiators huh, of the Roman Empire? Then the steps, steps I mean, descended steps, where the king will have to go and sit down and relax and you know have fun. Hallelujah. He will not understand. Why we now have the Vatican City inside the city of Rome? You will not understand. Hallelujah. Because all those things weren't there then. In fact, the, there wasn't any, you know, no place for Christianity in Rome in those days. They were persecuted. They were plotted against. Amen. So that is the story. Now, Today, are you listening? Are you with me, people? Yes. You can't miss this. This is the foundation of our faith. Now, today, the Jews are surviving and, of course, thriving wherever they, find, wherever they are found in the world because they are able to keep faith in one God. 
Amen? Faith in one God. If Moses, uh, if Moses should arrive in Jerusalem today, uh, though he has never been there, you remember? He wasn't able to lead them to the land of promise. So he never been to Jerusalem. Uh, he will find, he will still find the Torah. The Torah. Uh, the same culture, the ritual, the passion, ideals, and values uh, that he left with the Jewish people. It's never changed. And that is why they can maintain themselves anywhere they find themselves in the world. The synagogue is unique. The culture, the way they pray, the way they serve God, one same God is never changed. You know how many Nigerians that are in the United States today? That they don't even remember their generations and generations of they don't even remember that they, they have anything to do with Nigeria. Hallelujah. That they don't have anything to do with Nigeria. They mixed out. The Jewish people never mixed out. They stand out anywhere they are. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. So that's what is happening. Nonetheless, Many of the Jewish population uh, 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 remain scattered all over the world. They are still struggling to have a national boundary or homeland of their own. Uh, the land that you know, was given to them, the land that was given to them as their inheritance by God, the creator of land, uh, more than 4,000 years ago, they're still struggling to get it. They're still struggling to get it. They never got it. And that is why war and war and war and war and battle. Because he smile, he smiles, generation will not let go. A donkey of a man live in hostility with his, his brothers. Are you hearing me? Can we connect the dots now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let us go back to the historical trend. At a point, the king of Israel started moving away from God, and for that reason, Israel was divided and attacked by neighboring nations because they, they, they shifted the attention from God that has brought them, that rescued them, that had covenant with them. And the consequences was that uh, they were attacked. The, the, I mean, the, the nation was divided. You remember the northern and the southern? Hallelujah. The, 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 the Rehoboam, the Jeroboam, all the children of Solomon. Praise the Lord. How things started cracking. Huh? Then the Jews were scattered all over the world, leaving just a remnant behind in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Just a remnant were left behind in Jerusalem. Then what did you see? So the many, the many, uh, then many of those nations and people that they displaced uh, according to the direction given to them by God started coming back and taking over the land from you know the people, including Jerusalem. Hallelujah! Including Jerusalem, they started coming back because the people have been dispersed. Hallelujah. So they are not coming back. But the question is, how can God have an everlasting covenant with a nation that no longer exists? A man, you know, in such a situation uh, could have given up the relationship, but not God. God is not going to give up on you. Amen? He's not going to give up on you. He's not going to give up on his covenant with you. So he did not give up on you and me. He, he wanted to reestablish re the relationship all the time. Is somebody sleeping here? No. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then the Holocaust and the creation of Israel, uh, of the state of Israel in 1914 by the United Nations. Hallelujah. After the incident of Hitler, that killed six million of them. Hallelujah. And so the rest of them started fleeing from Europe. They are running back to Jerusalem. 
Many came to the United States. Hallelujah. And so the United Nations now felt that something has to be done to create the land for these people. Historically, by briefly, these are the people who God has given this part of the world, of the land. And so they decided to give the land back to them. And that is the land that was given back to them. Hallelujah. You can see Israel in this area, all this area here, Haifa, Tel Aviv, Israel. But look at Jerusalem. Look at Jerusalem. You see what is a Jordan, I mean, Jordanian controlled area. So this place was not given to them. You can see Jerusalem is not even part of it. Hebron, not part of it. Praise the Lord. See where Jordan is? Huh? So Jordan now controls this part. And look at the Gaza Strip, right? This one is controlled by Egypt. Hallelujah. Let's read that text. It says, before they fought again, you know, in 1948, from 1948 to 68, the West Bank, uh, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, was ruled by Jordan. Uh. During this period, the Gaza Strait was under Egypt, you know, uh, uh, military administration. So they never really got all the land. All right. So now after the war, they went to war in 1967 with all the Arab countries coming together to fight against, you know, Israel. All the Arab countries, Egypt, Jordan, even uh, uh, Iraq. Saudi was ready. Hallelujah. But Israel, you know, brought them down within six days. Amen. All of them. No, these are people, people of God. That's what I'm saying. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Hallelujah. Amen. When God is interested in you, you don't need to care what the enemy is thinking. Hallelujah. You don't need to care. That is the gospel. These people, are they were protected. And so, in, he says, in pre- Empty attack on Egypt that drew Syria and Jordan into uh, into regional war in 1967. Israel made massive territorial gains. Hallelujah! Gains capturing the West Bank, Gaza Strip, Golan Heights, Golan Heights, and the Sinai uh, uh, Peninsula that belongs to uh, Egypt. Hallelujah! Up to Suez Canal. Up to Suez Canal. Let me show you the map. This is what it is. The land occupied in 1967 as a result of the war. They took over all this place. It actually belonged to them. Hallelujah. Because it was demarcated. If you read that scripture, it said from the land, I mean from the river Euphrates. Amen. River Euphrates and Tigris. Those, those river here uh, was been mentioned in the Bible that from all this area belong to the people of God. Hallelujah. So they took back the Gaza Strip. They took even the Egypt Sina. Hallelujah. Amen. But they returned this part to, I mean, to, 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 uh, to Egypt when they had some kind of a reconciliation. Hallelujah. But they took over the rest of them, including Golden Heights. Uh, that belongs to Syria. They gave it back to Syria. I mean, they are still struggling for it. They are not even giving it back. Hallelujah. So that tells you about the special people. What's the time? Every time I preach this, 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 I mean, this is very something I'm mean, so excited, so emotional, because I know my faith, that is where my faith is, is, is hanged onto. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The benefits that I have today. So I showed us a kind of a, a video. We can do that now. A, a kind of video that shows how, you know, uh, the Israelis, they were able to, 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 to destroy the whole lot of their enemy. Hallelujah. So the Bible does not say that the conflict 
and Middle East will end someday. The Bible didn't say anything about the end. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said that, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. For those that love him, huh? will prosper. Praise the Lord. So not long ago, the Arab countries came with an idea of how to end the hostility. So they call it Abraham Accord. That is, all they believe that they are all descendants of Abraham, even though they are Ishmael's and uh, 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 Isaac. But nevertheless, they wanted to bring, you know, a kind of a reconciliation to end the hostility. You know, and you see like United Emirates, you know, and the rest of them, uh, including Egypt, all of them, they are now in good relationship. Jordan, they are now in good relationship with Israel. Hallelujah. But notwithstanding, they still want the land. They still want the land. So the conflict is still going up. Praise the Lord. So now, in the New Testament, uh, <clears throat> the scripture uh, uh, described uh, how Jesus picked up from where David's you know, line messed up to fulfill you know, the lasting, I mean, the everlasting covenant that God had with Abraham. And in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1 through the end of it, you can read the whole thing. I just put only first three verses that talks about what we are looking for. So the Bible says here that this is the, ge the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son, of, uh, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was, uh, Abraham was the father of Isaac. You remember that? Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers, right? Judah, the father of Perez and Sarah. Uh, Sarah. Then uh, Uth's mother was Tamar, Perez, the father of this, and on and on and on until it goes to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can read the entire chapter. You will see that genealogy as it is written there for the continuation of the covenant that God had with Abraham. Hallelujah. So how did God do this? Is it important that every Christian, uh, for every Christian to understand that sin separates man always from God and prevents man from rip, uh, uh, reaping all the wonderful promises of God? Hallelujah. Sin, you can remember when sin started coming to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the nation of Israel, how they were being punished. They were scattered all over the world. Hallelujah. And Hebrew chapter 9 explained how, you know, uh, pre-planned crucif uh, crucifixion or crucifixion of Christ make it, you know, possible for us to enjoy the benefit of the new covenant. Hallelujah. It made us to enjoy the benefit of the new covenant. Before his coming, we see how imperfect the earthly tabernacle, uh, tabernacle was, uh, was for the atonement of sin. Amen. We saw all those things at that, uh, at that time. Then uh, in, in the tabernacle, each room contains the furniture necessary for the variety of rituals. Hallelujah. The most important item in the inner sanctuary was the gold that covered uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. That's inside the tabernacle. Amen. It goes further. The covering of the seat that was called Mercy Seat. Uh, this was the focus of the annual day of uh, a torment ritual in the tabernacle. Every year, the Jewish people from all over the world, they go to Jerusalem, they go to the temple to have a kind of atonement. Hallelujah. They sacrifice. You remember when Jesus had to enter the temple the other time and he sent out those that were selling and buying? You know, that is the purpose because they have to make a ritual. Hallelujah. To clean, to wash themselves of their sins. Hallelujah. So the cherubim overshadowing the place of atonement pointed to the invisible presence of God who was taught to be, you know, enthroned between the cherubims. 
Hallelujah. Then it was God uh, that gave Moses the pattern. The result was uh, the result was sanctuary with a divine service, and it was a shadow of what was going on I and mean, what is going on in heaven. So in the sanctuary, you find out there is a distinction between two rooms. There is holy place and the most holy place. The holy place and the most holy place. Those are two uh, distinct places. It was the high priest that performed the rituals for the people using the blood of the animals to atone for his own sin, then the sin of the people. That's what he does. You know, because the priest himself is, you know, is a, 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 a sinner. So, but this was not efficacious, uh, was not efficacious in that the ritual actually left the participants guilty, you know, for their sins. The priest sometimes dies in the process. Hallelujah. When they are going to the inner of inner, they need to tie a rope around their waist. So in case they are dead, because Going inside to the Holy of Holy, if you are sinful, you are going to die. So they use that rope to pull them out. Hallelujah. Until we have the high, the, another high priest in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So that is where I'm going. Let me quickly see if I can cover out a little more. So all these were imposed uh, until Christ entered the scene with a new order as high priest of the good thing you know, to come with greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hand, not of, I mean, of this uh, uh, creation. Then in Hebrew, the Bible says, for this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called, uh, who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom, to set free, uh, to set them free from the sin committed under the first covenant. So can, can you see the link now? How Jesus Christ came into the sin and the purpose of his coming was, of course, to continue the covenant that God made with Abraham, part of which we are now, you know, sharing. Hallelujah. So you see how it all goes, that God is a God of covenant, not with the blood of bull, and rams, but with, the, with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once and for all. He cleaned up, you know, he cleaned up the conscience and removed the burden uh, of, of guilt. Hallelujah. Christ's priestly ministry opened the way for the heaven itself. After this, his sacrifice, he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God to make intercession for you and for me. Hallelujah. So since the sacrifice was uh, 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 done, we are liberated to serve God with confidence and gratitude, having obtained eternal redemption, you know, who's, uh, 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 for those who really, you know, rely on him. Hallelujah. Christ sets up freedom for the judgment and guilt produced by sin. We need to know that this is a covenant reached, you know, on our behalf, and it's guaranteed by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says that if man is in Christ, all things are passed away, then the fullness, then the fullness of God blesses spiritually and materially becomes peace. Hallelujah. So the covenant is between God and every believer uh, through Christ Jesus. Amen. So there are three parts to the covenant. It created relationship between man and God. It guaranteed blessing for Israel, that is the legitimate children of Abraham in terms of wealth, health, favor, and etc. Then it implies that Abraham's seed would take, take control of the gate of their enemy. These, they are, they are extended, I mean, this is being extended to you and to me. For it is written, through Abraham, all families of the earth shall be blessed. So you can see the connection now. That through Abraham, all the families on the earth, including you and me, shall be blessed. So the covenant is eternal, and it is speaking in our favor. The spiritual children of Abraham 
via our Lord Jesus Christ are part of what becomes of the covenant between man and God. Then if you are out of, of, of touch uh, with God, it is time to come back. Come back home and activate the covenant with him. Hallelujah. He loves you and his blessings are still waiting for you. Why would you or why anyone would delay? Hallelujah. That's all that I have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.